Hello everybody, this is Gary with MacMost Now, the show for Apple enthusiasts. Today, I'll look at Firefox 3. Firefox is the other browser. For most people, other means other instead of Internet Explorer. But for us Mac users, it means other instead of Safari. So let's go take a look at the new release of Firefox, Firefox 3. How does it measure up to Safari, and how does it measure up to the old Firefox 2? Let me start off by saying that I generally love Firefox. I mean, for a while it even supplanted Safari as my primary browser. And I still use Firefox all the time, side by side with Safari. It's a great product and it's great that we have a really good viable alternative on the Mac and a browser that works cross-platform, Windows and Mac, and looks virtually the same. So I heartily recommend that everybody with a Mac also have Firefox installed. I insist that people I know have Firefox installed on Windows because of some of the advantages it has over Internet Explorer in preventing viruses and other unwanted things in your computer. But for Mac users, how does Firefox 3 measure up? Well, I'm a little disappointed in Firefox 3. First of all, I don't think it looks very good. It doesn't look very Mac-like and doesn't show a significant interface improvement over Firefox 2. The second thing I don't like about it is there aren't really very many new features. Let's go and take a look at what is new in Firefox 3. Okay, so Firefox does look a little bit different, but it still has the general Firefox interface. It's got tabs at the top, and it's got the general address bar, search bar, all that. You can see the buttons look a little bit different as well. I'm not sure uh, if this is better. I don't really think it's better than the old Firefox, and I don't like it as much as how Safari looks, which is extremely well-fitting with the rest of the Mac interface. There are a couple things you can find here in the Firefox window that you couldn't find before. One of them is a really easy way to add bookmarks with one click. There's a little star that appears and you can click on it to bookmark the page. Uh, how, uh, another thing this does is if it's already bookmarked you can click on it and it will edit that bookmark which is really nice because you can remember if you've had a site bookmarked already and quickly edit it. One of the features that's supposed to be in Firefox that's really disappointing is the ability to move your cursor over the little icon here and a little pop-up will come up and tell you something about the website. But unfortunately, it usually just says something like, this website does not supply identity information. It's supposed to protect you. It's supposed to tell you who the website is and whether or not they're legitimate. But in fact, it doesn't. Not even from Mozilla, the company that makes Firefox, or for any website I could find. I mean, we're talking Yahoo, Google, Amazon. None of them came up with any information here. Some research shows that you have to go through quite a few hoops to actually set up information to go here. So I'm not sure how useful this is going to be. One of the things I do like about Firefox, Firefox 2 and Firefox 3, is the bookmarking ability. The organize function is a lot better than what they have in Safari. You can organize your bookmarks in all sorts of different ways. So, for instance, we can go ahead and take a look at these bookmarks here, select one, and you can add something called tags to your bookmarks. So you can decide to tag something with several keywords and then search through your bookmarks for bookmarks that have that tag. So this is really useful when a site serves more than one purpose. For instance, you may go to a site that has both news and weather on it. And do you file that in a folder called Weather Sites or under News Sites? Well, with this, you can just tag it with both. And anytime you want to actually find a weather site, you can just look for all the sites with weather in them. And the little library interface here is a lot better than what Safari has. So Firefox definitely wins over Safari for bookmarking ability. Another cool thing is the zooming ability inside of Firefox. Now, if you try to do this with Internet Explorer or Safari, you basically get enlarged fonts. But by pressing Command Plus or Command Minus, you can enlarge the page and it will enlarge the entire page, re-rendering it. So all the graphics and everything as it's laid out stays the same. You can just read it a little bit better and it's easy to snap back to the original size. But that's really all I could find that I liked about Firefox 3. Granted, I still like a lot of features that are there that were there in Firefox 2, but they don't count. That being said, you should still get Firefox. I mean, after all, it is free. Just go to getfirefox.com to download the Mac version. Here's three quick reasons why you should have Firefox on your computer. Number one, add-ons. You can add extensions, some great developer extensions that help you quickly develop websites. Number two, toolbars. Now, I hate most toolbars, but there are a couple like StumbleUpon that are useful and you just can't do them in Safari. And number three, there are just some sites out there that just don't work in Safari for whatever reason. And having a second browser like Firefox on your machine will allow you to get to these sites without having to find a friend that's got Windows. So that's a quick look at Firefox 3. I'd like to hear what you think. If you've downloaded Firefox 3 and played with it a little bit, leave a comment to this post at macmost.com and let's have a discussion about it. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.